Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all organizers and uh, especially uh, to you, Viktor Jovanovsky, Lukcio Mitkovsky, Tuana Slayan, friends of the Philosophical Society of Macedonia, and of course to all of you, the participant viewers. The aim of this lecture will be twofold. On one hand, to summarize the main ideas concerning Ludwig Wittgenstein's conception of film art and its relation to his thought. And on the other hand, to review the cinematographic works dedicated to him and as invitation for discussion later, inspired uh, in a way by him. And that is very personal. So about Wittgenstein and the art of cinema, I need to start saying that uh, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein was a film lover and the interrelationship between his understanding of film art and his own conception of philosophy, understood in a part also as an art, is full of connections. Given the great intellectual and moral tension uh, with which uh, he lived, going to the cinema was for him a refreshing entertainment. In his own words, it was like a shower bath. Uh, Norman Malcolm, in his memoir on, on Ludwig Wittgenstein, says that he could sit in the front row as close to the action as he could get. This way, the screen would occupy his whole field of vision and his mind would be turned away from the thoughts of the lecture and his feelings of revulsion. But I don't think that means that for him, cinema was a uh, mere uh, mental distraction, being his own philosophical work conceived as an art, in which the use of images has such a particular strength, the art of film is in some ways connected to his method. So the main question I, I will tackle in relation to this is the question of uh, the distinction between say, saying and showing and uh, uh, the comparison between, uh, for this, between silent cinema and talking pictures. So the debate about the transition uh, from silent to sound films in the 30s is a very interesting one. Gilbert Seldes, for example, denounced sound films as a return to theater Einstein warned of the danger of uh, producing photographed representation of uh, theater kind. Many thought that visual beauty would be reduced, but others such as Jan Epstein were in favor. Even nowadays, uh, uh, some thinkers are against uh, sound cinema, like Michel Houellebecq has a very good uh, essay on this. But for most in the new era of sound, that was seen, uh, that was uh, 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 understood as a negative thing, as a, as, a, as a step backwards for the expressive and aesthetic possibilities that cinema was bringing, that cinema was showing. And as it's well known in the heart of Wittgenstein's philosophy is the distinction between saying and showing. So if saying is what is proper to language, showing would be what is expressed but cannot be contained in meaning. And on this issue, some authors, such as the Spanish thinker Deborah Sanchez Marin, have argued that while Wittgenstein believed that what could, be, what could not be said remained outside the limits of language, the directors of silent films believed that it was what could be said, what remained outside. Uh, so uh, according uh, to this uh, view that is shared by a number of uh, uh, authors, uh, Wittgenstein's famous aphorism that is uh, uh, well known what cannot be spoken, it is better to keep silent. Silent cinema would be replying to that what cannot be said it is better to show it. So silent cinema came to demonstrate that if it was silent, it was not only because of a technical uh, problem, but because 
it, it was discovered a different way of expressivity and of saying. And uh, silent cinema was showing us a silence that speaks. Uh, this vision, according to this perspective, what cinema denies is what can be shown and cannot be said. It should not be forgotten in this sense that in his Tractatus, Wittgenstein has developed this theory of language that he called pictorial, imagistic, in which the propositions had to be a kind of image of reality in order to fulfill a uh, isomorphic requirement. However, this conception, I think, is not uh, complete in the way that is interesting in terms of comparing forms of expression, but leaves untouched, in my opinion, the part in which uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein's extension between saying and showing has to do uh, with the very ineffability of a series of questions such, an, such as art, morality, religion, very important things that cannot be spoken about and which sometimes shown us are shown us uh, through uh, cinema, both silent and sound as an art. And the, the other part I would like to, to uh, uh, tackle uh, related to Wittgenstein and films is uh, the films dedicated to Wittgenstein because I had the opportunity to watch them again and uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, field, we find at least two um, relevant movies, very interesting films. Uh, Derek Jarman's Wittgenstein from 1993 and Peter Forgax, uh, I don't know the, if the pronunciation is, uh, uh, is good. Uh, sorry, they are, they are telling me the camera is not good. It doesn't matter, it's okay. So Derek Jarman's uh, biopic is uh, from 1993, and uh, the 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 other uh, this forgex is from 1992, and is uh, the title is Tractatus, Wittgenstein's Tractatus, as his uh, first book. So they are both of them. They constitute two completely different approaches, both very profound to Wittgenstein's uh, figure in cinematic terms. And I find fascinating how different the two films are, but I would recommend both of them without hesitation to any film lover, also to anyone interested in Wittgenstein. And of course, like those of us here interested in Wittgenstein and film lovers. And I would already launch my thesis that Derek Jarman's biopic, as Jarman himself said, is not a film of Wittgenstein or rather that Peter Forgax's film, Tractatus, is to a greater extent a film of Wittgenstein. In a way, of course, Jarman's biopic describes in a very uh, witty and eloquent way, characteristics of uh, Wittgenstein's life and Wittgenstein's figure, focusing perhaps too much on his homosexuality. And anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a nice introduction uh, approach for, for, from the cinema to his thought. And also to the whole Bloomsbury group, by the way. But the distance is given not only in the aesthetic approach of the work, that is, is not very Wittgensteinian in a way, uh, although according to some authors, it has connections in the use of colors and, and other things, uh, but basically because also the scripts were modified. So Terry Eggleton's original film script was extensively rewritten by Derek Jarman. So the script is twice removed from the original source, while Forgax's film is just the text of Wittgenstein. The contrast with Forgax's film, where the script writer is Wittgenstein himself, uh, this is a very big contrast. And the same goes for the images. This aesthetic that Forgas uses is very much in the spirit of Wittgenstein's philosophy. Uh, about this theme of the Germans, uh, Wittgenstein and Colors, Stephen Barnes uh, wrote a very interesting essay uh, in which uh, he defends that the most vivid impression of the film 
maybe the amazing palette of colors which uh, German, German uses. He says, from mauve bed sheets and pink ostrich feathers to yellow canvas chairs, from a red pillar box to a little green Martian, the viewer is assaulted by dramatic and unexpected colors, laid not with a brush, but a palette knife in broad, bold strokes, which is true. But on contrast, Forgas Wittgenstein Tractatus is composed of seven short video essays set in motion just like uh, photographies that are, are torn and then they, they, uh, uh, they are put, away, uh, put together again and they break apart again. And each of, each, each of, uh, of them is related to one of Wittgenstein's philosophical propositions of Tractatus. And in this uh, film, black and white home movies from the early 20th century are accompanied by voiceovers and written texts of the Tractatus with a very uh, lyrical background. They are scenes of uh, vulgar life, but also haunted by forebodings of future. So I would say, that of these three films, the most faithful to Wittgenstein's thinking, because it is neither a visual biography description like the Sykes documentary, for example, more conventional approach, or um, what has been called an experimental comedy drama, like the Jarmas ones, or a, a, a queer biopic, whatever. Peter Forbes, with symbolic description of the disconnection between language and image of Business and theories of logic, language, and reality and representation is, is the most faithful and uh, uses also a kind of aesthetics, a kind of expression that uh, probably shows uh, the best what cannot be said. So I would leave a last, um, a last question open for the debate, uh, which would be. Uh, which films are, have been inspired in Wittgenstein? This is very difficult to decide, it's very personal. I saw many people were agreeing on some, like Antonioni's and Knight and others. Uh, also during the last few days, I was thinking in uh, Degrossi's Chile, uh, can, be, can be many. And uh, this I think would be a good uh, start point for a uh, further, for uh, uh, a different, uh, another day uh, discussion. So thanks a lot, and uh, I hope to, to enjoy the debate and the rest of the uh, presentations that I, I understand it will be published or scrolled. Thank you.